Hello, my beautiful babies. Guess what today is? It is Taco Tuesday. You guys, I've missed you so much. And I hope everybody's safe and practicing washing their hands, keeping your hands off of your face and out of your mouth, keeping away from everybody and having fun with your families. You guys, I know this is going to be tough. It seems like everywhere schools are closed until April, but we're going to get through this. I'm here for you. Your family's here for you. And let's just try to have some fun and let's make the best of it. Now, one thing I thought about was like last week, I showed you guys alligator. This week, I'm going to think of something else. I'm going to think of something else to show you. That way it can keep us busy. This is just some raspberry lemonade I picked up at the store. You all going to the store was bananas. It was crazy in there. It was bananas. You can hardly get anything you want in there. Well, today I'm going to read a story. I don't know if you've ever heard of this story before, but you know what else, you all? The libraries are closed. Can't go in there and get books. I have to pull out from my own books. Now, this was a book I wanted to share with you during Black History Month, but I couldn't find it. So I have all this time now to clean and look for stuff. Here it is. It popped up. This book is an incredible book. It's called New Shoes, and it's by Susan Lynn Meyer. And the illustrations are by Eric Velasquez. Ooh, you guys, it's a very good story. And I don't want to tell you what it's about because I want you all to listen and follow along as we read. New shoes. I used to wear shoes like this when I was a little girl. I'm going to make sure you see all the pictures. You know I am. Alright, here we go. My cousin Charlotte hands me the package as we stand outside Johnny's shoes. If you could have any shoes in the window, I asked. Which one would you choose? Those, Charlotte says, pointing to the red sandals. What about you, Ella Mae? Today I choose saddle shoes. They'd be just right for back to school. But I know full well it's just wishing. Money's too tight for new shoes. When I get home, Mama opens the package. Winslow's shoes are in good shape, she says. She hands them to my brother Clayton. That's the way we always hand them down. Winslow's shoes go to Clayton and Charlotte's shoes go to me. I clean Charlotte's old shoes, but Mama, when I put them on, they pinch my toes. Ow, Mama. Mama sighs. We'll just have to scrap together some money for some new shoes. Shoes I pick out myself? I can't believe it. On Saturday, we're going to Johnson's. On Saturday morning, when we walk in, the bell jingles. Mr. Johnson looks our way. Behind us, the door jingles again. A girl with yellow curls walks in with her daddy. 
Mr. Johnson's head turns towards them. Mama and I walk to the back of the store and stand against the wall. That blonde-haired girl tried on some shoes, posing in front of the mirror. I sighed. Mama, weren't we here first? But I know that colored people always have to wait. Finally, the girl's daddy buys her a new pair of shoes, and then they leave. How can I help you now, Mr. Johnson says to us. I point to a display of saddle shoes. I want to try those on right there. I hear Mama suck her breath in. Oh, um, well, maybe we can do something different, Ella May. Well, make a picture of your feet for Mr. Johnson. But I started to say, Pencil and paper are over there, gal, Mr. Johnson says to Mama. Why do you think she has to make her feet or trace her feet on a piece of paper? Why do you think? Can you guess? Mama traces my feet and Mr. Johnson takes the pencil and comes back with a shoe box. Mama holds the shoes next to me and Mr. Johnson fidgets. Yes, I think these will fit, Mama says, and she counts out her money. Anybody guess? Why did Mama have to trace her feet on the paper? Do you know the answer? Rain is pouring down when we leave, and Mama snaps open her umbrella. Mama, I said, can't colored folks try on shoes? Mama sighs. No. But then she puts on a smile. Let's think about how nice your feet will look in those shoes for school. I like my shoes, but it isn't fair that only the other people can try them on, and I can't. Mama and I walk on together, listening to the rain. The next day in school, I saw Charlotte with my shoes on. But then I told her about what happened at Johnson's. Charlotte nods. You know what? That's happened to me too, she whispered. Even though I have new shoes, I feel bad most of the day. But then during spelling, I had an idea. I'm going to tell Charlotte as we walk home. Yes, she says. I'll help. Ooh, they're coming up with an idea. I wonder what it is. You guys, are you enjoying this story? You know I have to ask you. It's a fun story. So, Charlotte and I do chores. We scrub. We pick the last green bean. We mind babies. Most folks say they can't pay much. Never mind, I say. We'll work for a nickel and a pair of outgrown shoes. They have a plan. At the end of the month, 
we line up the shoes with the empty shells in the old barn next to our house. Charlotte scoops up the coins. I'll go buy the polish, she says. Wow. I'll go buy the polish. What are they getting ready to do, you guys? While she is gone, I clean the shoes with a soft rag. And then I pull out all the dirty shoelaces. I wash them in lots of soapy water until the water squeezes them off clean. And I hang the laces on the clothesline to dry in the sun. Charlotte comes running back. I call Red, she said. She uses a nickel to pry open the red tin, and I open the black. I take a pair of shoes and rub the polish in. Then I scrunch up my hands inside, smoothing out all the wrinkles, and buff the shoes until they are shiny. I think they have a great plan here. The sun has dried the laces now. I thread them back through the holes. Charlotte holds up the shiny red Mary Jane she had been buffing. Almost as good as new, she said proudly. Aren't these great pictures, you guys? Look how lovely the illustrations are. They're beautiful. The neighbors know we are ready to open even before the paint on our sign is dry. Ella May and Charlotte Shoes, it says. Price, 10 cents and another used pair. Mrs. Douglas peeps out the barn door holding little Laura's hand. Right then, I see more neighbors coming. Ella May and Charlotte Shoes, price 10 cents in another used pair. I see what they're doing. Can you see what they're doing? It's a wonderful idea. Good job, girls. Look at this, Mrs. Douglas marvels. No need to go down to Johnson's now. Then she hesitates. Last time the shoes from Johnson's gave my Laura blisters, she says. Can she try these on to see if they fit? Charlotte and I smiled. We hold our heads up proud. Yes, ma'am, she can. I said it loud and clear. In our store, anyone who walks in the door can try on all the shoes they want. The end. Little entrepreneurs these girls are. know if any of our friends have experienced that before but when you go in and try on shoes I'm sure you don't have to trace your shoes or trace your feet on paper in the story they explain why she had to trace her feet on paper now this happened years and years ago and it's a true story. Things like this did happen. This is what I want you to do. Kids, ask your mom and dad, or your auntie, or your uncle, your grandma, grandpa, if they remember anything like this. It would be a good discussion for you. Now that you're home from school, have family time and have discussions with your parents. 
Hey, by the way, you know what I want to ask you. Did you tell yourself that you're the greatest? Did you? Come on, Miss V. Miss V wants to hear. Say, I am the greatest. Yes, you are the greatest. And Miss V loves you. I want you all to continue doing your best. Just because you're not going to school does not mean your education does not continue. You keep on learning and keep on doing your best. And let Miss V know if there's anything I can do for you. I love dedicating books to you. I'm sending love. I'm sending peace. I'm sending a big hug. Peace.